here at Cottage Field Stables for about five years now. Um, tell us about how you came across the, the property in the first place. Um, it was, it was a, as much by chance as anything else. One of my owners, um, Mrs. Newell, she had horses with us up in the Cotswolds, and uh, she knew we were looking for somewhere. And she arrived one day with a newspaper cutting saying, I think you should go and look at this. Um, it might work for you. So we pretty much made an appointment almost the next day and came down and had a walk around and it was um, very much a, a, a run-down farm. Um, they used to grow fruit here and um, it was a beautiful spring afternoon and Sophie and I decided we ought to try and buy it so we pretty much bought it that afternoon. It was the topography of the land really um, and you know where we put the gallop we had to put a lot of thought into that and uh, you know, I think we got it in absolutely bang on the right place as it happens and uh, it, it, I just thought it lended itself beautifully to training, training racehorses, it's incredibly peace, peaceful. Initially we, um, we, we kitted out the top barn and, um, with stables and we put the menage in, the lunge pen, the jumping school and one walker and then obviously the gallops, they went, the, the wood chip um, hill gallop went in immediately and the, the sand followed a couple of years later and the water walk, you know, that followed a, a year after the sand gallop. Um, it's just year on year we keep trying to improve things and, and make things a little bit better. And what is the benefit of the, the, the water walk that I believe you actually redirected some of the topography in order to make that work? Yeah, well it's, it's spring fed so in the winter it's absolutely crystal clear when the, the weather's plenty of rain about. Um, the theory behind it was, you know, it's just to a, the horses love it, and um, also it just calls those mi the microfibers in their tendons immediately after they've been, you know, doing some core fitness work on the sand. 2018, the spring of that year, it was when you had a great Aintree festival. You had Jester Jet when you had Thomas Patrick when I think Jester Jet that season summed up what you've become known for, which is your consistency of results on the track. How do you go about placing your horses to achieve that? Uh, we try and keep them in the grades. We think they can, you know, win, but. Um, it's also, you, you know, you have to be brave and you know, if your horses aren't right, you've got to tell your owners they're not right and, and not run them. There's no point sending a horse to the races if you don't think he's fit and healthy and going to be competitive. Um, so we just try and get them in rude health and find a race that they can win. And that success definitely carried on last year. Kate's and possibly your, your headline horse placed in the Chalo Hurdle. How has he come through the summer? He's summered really well. I mean, he came in... Um, slightly behind some of the others he came in on the um, 1st of July. He had a fantastic summer at David Richards who bred him. He did a super job with him and uh, he'll now go novice chasing. There's a, a novice chase at Newbury early November and actually there's a raft of nice novice chases he could start in throughout November on you know, suitable tracks. What's he like to deal with? He's good as gold. You know, he's very quiet. He's, he, you know, he, He's, he, he's very quiet in and around the yard. He's quite an awkward ride and he's been criticised for his head carriage, but he's, in, he's an incredibly genuine horse. I think he showed that in Michello. I mean, it was a questionable start and some people have criticised that aspect of whether the race was truly run, but the quality of horse in Michello, that looks like a very strong renewal now. Absolutely, it does. And you know, he didn't, Haydock all went horribly wrong for him and then he was probably over the top by the time he got back to Aintree. Um, yeah, he's, he's a relatively young horse and maybe the challenge just left its mark on him a little bit. Uh, so I mentioned Thomas Patrick was one of those Aintree winners. Um, unfortunately, he hasn't come back perfectly from the summer. Uh, well, he, he came back incredibly well from the oh. summer, but he's, um, he, we t he's a horse that we turn out every day and he came back from um, having a, just a routine canter the other day absolutely fine and went into the paddock behind us and we went to get him at lunchtime and he was sore behind so we got the vet out immediately and he thinks he's just tweaked a hamstring or pulled the muscle so he's just on box rest this morning so sadly you've not been able to see him out. Um, he ran really well behind Elegant Escape at Sandown first time out last season and then was very very fancy for the Ladbrook Trophy but things didn't quite go to plan after that. No, um, the run behind Ele Elegant Escape I'd say was a career best run. Um, and then the Ladbrook Trophy, I still feel I made a bad decision. My gut said, you know, it wasn't the race for him, but yet, you know, we went ahead and did it. And uh, then after he ran at Ascot, we, you know, he just wasn't showing the spark he'd shown previously. So we sent him for a full MOT and uh, he, he was diagnosed with 
uh, bone pain similar to presenting Percy. So he had a long summer uh, rest and hopefully we can get him back firing this time. Is it just a question of time with an issue like that? I think so, yeah. I mean, according to the vets, you've just got to leave them alone for a bit. And, uh, you know, he's moving great. He never took a lame step at any stage last year. So, you know, we don't have x-ray vision. Um, have you got ideas for where he might go this season? Well, he's down to 140 um, in the handicap, so he's dropped eight pounds. You know, I don't think he likes huge big fields, so we'll, we'll just try and find you know, an opportunity for him as and when he tells us he's ready to go and have a, a run. Equus Amadeus, uh, we saw him the first in the Scottish champion hurdle. How's he? He's had a good summer. He's back. He'll, he'll go novice chasing. He's actually has run. He ran um, at Worcester last year, so he's, he's ticked the novice box, novice chase box. Um, so he's got options. He'll, he'll be out running within, you know, certainly I would have thought before the end of September. Is there any particular um, trip going combination that you well, he, he could step up to two mile four. We, the, the tongue tie certainly helped him. Um, he had he did have his palate cauterized last year. Um, he'll probably need that doing again at some point. But again, he's he's a horse that we'll just try and pick our way. Uh, Sebastopol um, won his first point to point view at Lark Hill 2018 and then went obviously under rules. Um, bumper winner at air. What's he like? Yeah. He's, last year was really unfortunate. Every turn he went round, he met a pothole in the road. Um, he had a really nasty, nasty cut on his, the point of his um, near hind joint. And it just took forever and ever to, to seal, to close over. And um, then we took him, um, he ran at Cheltenham. He, 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 I thought he ran okay. Aidan Coleman said he didn't really have any traction on that ground. Um, he, he is a top of the ground horse and we then took him up to air. I was, I was just never happy with how he was jumping. He looked uncomfortable. And um, I said to Clive and Charmaine, you know, I think we should just x-ray his spine because that's not the horse that, you know, won a point to point at Lark Hill. He, he, he's a way better jumper than that and, and much slicker. And uh, we x-rayed his spine and sure enough, he did have a bit of a kissing spine. So he had that done shortly after air and then Clive and Charmaine made the decision to leave him this year, give him some time. Um, and he's come back in, he's only just come back in and he, he's had a fantastic summer and, you know, Clive and Charmaine have done a super job, you know, popping him over poles and et cetera. And, you know, so there's a lovely foundation in place for him. Uh, Kimber like Candy, pulled up in the Irish National, but yep. before that fifth in the Ida, where do you think you might go with him? Well, Richie McLernan, who's struck up a really good relationship with him, um, he's mad keen to go up to Aintree in December for the Beecher, or um, depending on the ground. I mean, the three mile one round there and those fences, Richie's eyes light up when the thought of it. And you know, it, it's probably not the most ridiculous idea in the world. He's, he's a funny horse, Kimber, like Candy, you know, depending on what side of bed he gets out on. Um, but he's, he's very much a yard favourite and he's a real character. And um, when he's on song, you know, he's a, a lovely horse to have. Is there anything you do when you were taking a horse to the Aintree fences for the first time that you'd do differently in, in preparing them for it? Only you'd have to go to, um, up to Lambourne and, and jump the fences, but you know, his, his jumping is exceptional. Would that maybe be a kind of a, a benefit in the sense that it's like an away day without absolutely. actually having a, a run? A, absolutely, it would. And, and he lights up when he goes away. so. You know, it would be uh, it would be as good as a racecourse gallop. So he could very easily go straight to Aintree for you. I think he could. He runs. He his best runs are always when he's fresh. Um, he he wants genuine soft ground. Um, he's he's a lovely horse and on a workable mark. And I think there's a big race in him one day. Glory and fortune um, won his his only start last year. Listed bumper at Cheltenham. What's he like to deal with? He's by fame and glory. So he you know he he can be a bit. Um, excitable at times but he's, he's in a very good place at the moment um, Tommy O'Brien's ridden him every day since he walked into the yard and he's very happy with him he uh, we were thinking of taking him up to Aintree and um, we just gave him his final bit of work beforehand and he didn't quite finish out the gallop how we would have liked, to, liked him to have so um, we decided we'd put him away and, and save him for this year there's a um, there's a two mile two hurdle in Huntingdon that he could possibly go to um, in November 
but there, there's no rush with him. You know, we've just this is there's a lot of horses here this year. It's very much laying the foundations for the for the future. Uh, Tom Lozzy Mouth, um, something of a perplexing combination of flat pedigree, very much the physique of a national hunt horse. So what's yeah. what's he like? He's um, he's he's got every attribute you want in a race horse. You know, he eats, sleeps, and gallops, and he just goes. I mean, he hasn't learnt to race yet. Um, he's done plenty of schooling over hurdles, and he's he's schooling really nicely. He's, um, I think, he's an ex a very very um, exciting horse, and uh, I think the world's his oyster. I, I just love the way he he goes through his races. He's always hitting the line very hard, and um, he's a, he's definitely a horse for the future. And there's not many four-year-olds, you know, follow up with a penalty, so. Yeah, he, he's really exciting.